Hello everyone, welcome to Preter's Papers. This is the 28th discussion in our series and is called Ancient Israel was the Fourth Kingdom and Beast, Not Rome. And this is a theory. You can find this two-page document at preterspapers.com. We're making a correction of previous work regarding the identity of the fourth kingdom of Daniel 2, which is also the fourth beast in Daniel 7. This would change a few items on a handful of the previous fact sheets, but it does not substantially alter the documents, and it leaves the time frame completely intact. We, here at Preter's Papers, are an example of uncritically following a well-established tradition and then finding that tradition does not stand up to close scrutiny. We assume that Rome was the fourth beast because doesn't everyone know Rome followed Greece in being a world power? Well, yes, but we need to keep in mind that the Bible is about salvation history and centers on ancient covenant Israel. So we need to look to see what happened to Israel directly after the Greek occupation. And we find that under the leadership of the Maccabees, Israel gained her independence from the Syrian Greek domination and became an independent state in 142 BC. Consequently, Israel itself was the fourth kingdom. From 142 BC until its destruction in 8070, approximately 210 years, Israel was a state independent for the first 80 years approximately and occupied by Rome for the last 133 years. This constitutes then the fourth kingdom, or fourth beast, of Daniel 2 and 7. This requires a sizable shift in thinking, but it's definitely worth investigation. Now the prophetic puzzle pieces fit together much better, whereas before there were some things that just didn't add up. This is just one of the many times we have had to learn that when we run into a problem of discontinuity, we should hold on to the coherence of the Bible and ask for wisdom. The result is seeing a new and higher unity in Scripture than we found before. Hezekiah, the zealot, who was the patriarch of what is referred to in this paper as the zealot dynasty, was beheaded without a trial by the hated Herod the Great in about 47 BC. As a result, Hezekiah was enrolled as a martyr of the Jewish people. In the present interpretation of the seven-headed beast of Revelation, chapter 13 and 17, Hezekiah would be the first head, and then his son, three grandsons, and two great-grandsons following. Please keep in mind that Jerusalem was built on seven hills, which are also mentioned in Revelation 17. Jesus, the Messiah, had offered his countrymen reconciliation with their Heavenly Father if only they would acknowledge their need. But the revolutionaries wanted what all revolutionaries want, material ownership and power. They weren't interested in reconciliation with the Father. They wanted an earthly kingdom. The human degradation we see in the Jewish and Roman conflict reveals the dilemma of mankind. Our problem is rebellion against God, which makes us enemies of each other and violent at heart. The rebels didn't want to repent. They were focused on the trespasses of others. They were self-righteous and, like all revolutionaries, believed they were special above others. They refused to humble themselves and examine their own hearts, as Jesus' Sermon on the Mount urged. This theory of the Fourth Kingdom helps us solve the problems we encountered in Document 21, for example. We were wondering why the Ten Horns, which were Jewish generals, were on the head of the Roman beast. Now we see they weren't. They were quite logically on the head of Israel. It's heartening when what seems to be beyond our understanding becomes clear and gives us an even greater appreciation for the unmatched coherence of Bible prophecy. 
Our thanks to Bible researcher Adam Marshak, who has done the heavy lifting putting together the evidence for the identity of the beast. Please see the end of this fact sheet for his website. Besides Adam's work, this document is closely reliant on Whiston's Wars of the Jews by Josephus. We can't emphasize enough how important this material is for serious Bible study. Shalom.